A very good evening, students. Hope today's INSET exam went well. While um, some of the questions were difficult, but some were easy and straightforward also. So let's quickly discuss the biochem question asked today. So the first question was light blue top tube used for glucose estimation contains which preservative? Now for glucose estimation, you know we use sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. But the tube for this is grey top tube, not light blue top tube. Light blue is for citrate. So, why citrate? Because of the recent studies, the citrate buffer decreases the pH, that is, increases acidity, and this acidic conditions inhibit the enzyme or hexokinase as well as phosphofructokinase of glycolysis. So. Now, according to recent studies, light blue top tubes, that is citrate containing tubes are preferred for glucose estimation. So the answer was A. The next question was on electrophoresis in patient with nephrotic syndrome, which bandwidth will increase? Now we know what is what happens in nephrotic syndrome, albumin is excreted out. So albumin level decreases and to compensate that, compensate that our body, body produces more alpha 2 globin. So that's why alpha 2 bandwidth will increase in case of nephrotic syndrome when seen on electrophoresis. Next is active site of enzyme is complementary to. So the, we know that the active site of the enzyme binds to the substrate. So the substrate fits it into it. So their shape is complementary to each other. So the answer is substrate. Whereas the product is the end product and the transition state is not the answer. An allosteric activator does not bind to the active state. It binds to some other state and change the shape of the active state. So the complementary shape is for substrate only. Next is 2,3-BPG bisphosphoglycerate binds to. Now 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate binds to the beta globin. So the answer is globin part of hemoglobin. So the answer is globin part of hemoglobin. So 2,3-BPG binds with the beta globin with help of 2,3 amino acids. Those are histidine, valine and lysine. So these are also important and you should remember. So the 2,3-BPG binds with the beta, part, beta globin of the hemoglobin with help of 3 amino acids. Next is what is true about cystic fibrosis. Now what happens in cystic fibrosis? CFTR gene is mutated. So, so this is for transport of chloride. But in sweat glands, there is there are two transporters, basal and apical. Basal is to secrete uh, chloride in sweat, and the apical is to reabsorb it. And there is more reabsorption than secretion. So, what will happen in CFTR gene mutation? There will be more chloride secretion in sweat, but Due to CFTR gene mutation, there is decreased secretion in pancreatic fluid because there is only one the CFTR protein. So, as it is mutated, chloride cannot be secreted in pancreatic juice. Whereas in sweat glands, we have two. One is for reabsorption, and both are mutated. So, final end product is there is more so chloride in the sweat. That's why sweat is salty. Next question is decreased transference saturation is seen in. So decreased transferrin saturation will be seen when RN levels decrease because RN saturates the transferrin. So here it will be seen in RN deficiency anemia whereas hemochromatosis and hemocydrosis there is increased RN content. So there will be uh, increased transferrin saturation and it will not be affected in macrocytic anemia. Next is detoxification of xenobiotics for phase 1 oxidation reaction required. So the answer is NADPH, the phase 1 reaction of detoxification that is hydroxylation reaction require NADPH and the cytochrome P450 it is converted into hydroxylated xenobiotic which is water soluble and is created out in urine. Next is all of the following uptake uh, uses uptake are insulin dependent glucose uptake except so here we know that which organs are uh, dependent on insulin for glucose uptake. They are adipose tissue, uh, skeletal muscle and cardiac muscles. So here brain, pancreas and RBCs are not the answer and adipose tissue is the correct answer. So this was very easy and straightforward question. 
Next is glycogen phosphorylase is activated by. Now we know glycogen phosphorylase is an enzymoglycogenolysis that is breakdown of glycogen. Now glycogen phosphorylase is active in phosphorylated state. So, so what will phosphatase do? It will phosphatase will remove the phosphate, so it will inactivate. Whereas it is activated in the phosphorylated state. So phosphatase is not the answer. Glucose 6-phosphate is the end product of gluco gly glycogenolysis. So again, the end product always inhibit the enzyme, so it is also not the answer. So next are cyclic AMP protein kinase. Yes, it phosphorylates the gly glycogen phosphorylase and calcium. Yes, it also activates glycogen phosphorylase by for to activating calmodulin so both are these are true so which answer to choose so here student cyclic amp protein kinase is a mediator which is increasing uh, by which increases glycogen phosphorylase but it needs to be mediated through uh, hormones like glucagon epinephrine which will increase cyclic amp whereas calcium is direct activator of the glycogen phosphorylase so when calcium level increases it activates glycogen phosphorylase so calcium is the better answer whereas cyclic amp protein is a mediator only it is not the vector so next is metabolic syndrome is not considered in a uh, criteria for metabolic syndrome not considered is hip circumference hdl glucose and hypertension that is blood pressure so here we take abdominal circumference so uh, a is not the uh, included in the criteria Next is in an experiment, parathyroid hormone was given to animal which increases calcium levels for first 4 hours. Now what is the role of parathyroid hormone? So it also increase release of calcium from bones as well as increase reabsorption of calcium from kidneys to maintain calcium level. So answer is B that is rapid release from calcium from bone and increase reabsorption from kidney. Uh, next question was after three days of dengue infection diagnosis can be made by all except now we know that for uh, uh, the dengue infection take four to five days to form antibodies so uh, antigen will be present viral load can be seen rt pcr can be done but antibody is not useful you uh, eliza for antibody for at three days so we have to wait for some more days Next was which of the following is not true? Rifampicin inhibits by binding to bacterial DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Yes, this is true. Next is azetronam inhibits synthesis of cell wall. Yes. Next was linozolid binds with the 30S subunit of ribosome. No, it binds to the 50S. It inhibits by binding to the 50S. So 30S is the wrong answer. So this was the answer. Next is diagram was given and asked it uh, which toxin is acting on uh, inactivation of elongation factor 2 which prevents protein synthesis so uh, this was not given so answer is diphtheria toxin so diphtheria toxin when combines with receptor it inactivates elongation factor 2 which prevents protein synthesis by ribosome next was monoclonal antibody synthesis by hybridoma technique exploit which pathway now what happens in uh, monoclonal uh, antibody hybridoma technique we use monoclonal cells which are rapidly dividing cells and which never die which continues to divide like in cancer cells whereas normal cells which have a lifespan and die after some time and these two cells are mixed in such a way that we get three types of cells one are normal cells one are hybrid of both um, cells monoclonal uh, and the normal cells and one only uh, monoclonal cells so what happens so and we add them into heart medium that is hyposanthin aminotarin and thymidine medium so normal cells will die after some time and monoclonal cells will also die because aminotarin will inhibit the uh, will inhibit the de novo purine synthesis whereas only these cells will survive so the answer is de novo purine synthesis so this mechanism exploit de novo purine synthesis to get cells which are mixture of mo monoclonal and normal cells next was in which of the following genetic material adenine is not equal to thymine so we know that in dna adenine binds with thymine with two bonds so in dna containing virus like herpes virus and E. coli there will be adenine will always be equal to thymine but HIV which is the RNA virus which is a single stranded so here 
adenin will not be equal to thymin so this is the answer now next question was match proto oncogene with cancers now kit is for git stromal tumors alk is for carcinoma lung cras is for pancreas cancer and jack is for lymphoproliferative cancer so this was the correct matching next is all of the following chelates heavy metal except so we know british anti leucocyte chelates heavy metal penicillin and triantin are used in wilson's disease to chelate copper whereas enzymes are used in treatment of poisoning and to reactivate acetylcholine then hiv rna enters a cell through which protein so here students these two proteins are act as a co receptors whereas gp120 is used by hiv rna to bind to the cell but to fuse and enter the cell it use gp41 protein so this is the answer so first two receptor the co receptors which helps to bind hiv gp120 attaches the cell and 41 is required to fuse with the cell so to enter the cell we need gp41 so match of the following uh so autosomal dominant disease is myotonic dystrophy autosomal recessive one is cystic fibrosis x link is duchenne muscular dystrophy which occurs mostly in males and mitochondrial is lho n so these are the answers so next question was so a patient with fever and stiff neck With, with a biochemical analysis of csa fluid was done so proteins were 80 mg and glucose is 20 mg and wbcs were lymphocytes so we know when then when glucose is decreased it is either bacterial or tubercular and now the cells are lymphocytes so if lymphocyte is tubercular tubercular and in for bacterial we have more neutrophils so the answer is tubercular meningitis Next question was recombinant HPV vaccine is made using which protein so it is used made using L1 protein of the capsid so answer is B so the next question was sodium transporter in early proximal convoluted tubule as we know that glucose is reabsorbed in early early proximal convoluted tubule with help of sodium glucose co-transporter that is SGLT2 so the answer is sodium glucose co-transporter along with sodium hydrogen antipode so these answer is d so students these were the all questions which i can collect for biochemistry and if you remember any more question you can write down in the comment section so we can discuss the those questions also so that was all all the best thank you so much